and, and I hear all of these 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 white shoe boy guys from Harvard, Princeton, Yale trying to convince the people there's no correlation between people losing everything, having no jobs, losing their houses, and increases in crime. You know, what am I, six years old, you're talking to me? You know, tell this to some stupid kid in high school. Well, even their economic numbers that are showing things worsening are admittedly cooked. And, and then for the last year, they said, don't worry, there's no radiation from the naked body scanners, and we're not saving the images, and we don't see your genitals. And now it turns out they got mobile vans with it, federal, state courthouses, the airports. They were saving it all from the beginning and lying. I mean, that shows a arrogance and a hubris or a chutzpah that is just off the charts, Gerald, for them to knowingly lie about everything. Uh, I mean, it's certainly getting worse. I mean, I mean, I guess if they've told a million lies, why not tell a million more? Exactly. You know, I was just on Fox this past week, and there was this guy from Washington, I forgot, and I was saying how bad things are going to get, and this guy comes out and starts saying, well, you know, in 1983, we were in a very similar situation, and the United States ingenuity, don't underestimate the American worker, that's what got us out of it. I said, listen, this is in 1983. In 1983, there was a Soviet Union. We didn't have all of this world trade with China. It was still communist China. They weren't eating up the global marketplace. These are very different times. And what do we have, Alex? We have a bunch of experts in the past. They keep touting about how brilliant Bernanke is and a scholar of the Great Depression. This isn't the Great Depression. This is 2010. And we have a bunch of incompetents that are leading this nation down the drain, selling it out. And mark my words, they're leading us to war. And whether it's going through Israel or somewhere else, we're going to see war coming soon and they know that and they need that as a political diversion and they know we're bankrupt they know globalism has decimated our industry they know this isn't 1983 and uh, they they count on the american people laying down and watching goldman sachs and jp morgan and tyson and all these insiders get richer at our expense but we see the major political realignment taking place. Everything you've predicted now unfolding. We're going to come back with Gerald Salente and hear your questions, your comments for our guest. I'm Alex Jones. This is the GCN Radio Network, GCNlive.com. Stay with us. Right now, let's go to your phone calls. Brian in Tennessee, you're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Uh, hello, Mr. Salente. Hello, Brian. Um, I've got about three points I want to touch on real quick. The first two, I want to talk to Mr. Salente, and Alex, I want to talk to you about the Constitution. Uh, that's the, the last point being my most important, so don't let me go uh, too quickly. <laughs> uh, but, Mr. Salente, uh, I was wanting to talk to you about the um, illegal immigration problem, uh, the 30 million illegals in this country that are working um, many of which are getting paid under the table that are not on record with the IRS. They're not getting taxed for their labor. I would, I want to ask you, sir, do you think that that would be a large percentage added to our uh, unemployment rate if we knew how many millions of these illegals were working and getting paid under the table? How, how, how far up do you think that And, and let me throw this caveat into the question. They're enforcing on lemonade stands and car washes for four cents, but the illegals are basically left alone, so that's kind of a quasi-legal black market via uh, selective enforcement, and the illegals can come here and have their baby here and have it paid for by taxpayers. At one hospital in Dallas this year, 11,071 babies born to be legals who become citizens, and most the births. It was free, paid for by tax money. That's the Dallas Morning News. Uh, Gerald, your comments on that? Well, you know, obviously that uh, you know, we just don't have the jobs to support uh, all these illegal immigrants. And neither, this is a global issue, by the way. Now, uh, you name the country, uh, France, Italy, Spain, uh, every country is facing this huge problem of trying to get rid of illegal aliens. And by the way, this is old news to us. We wrote in Trends 2000, I wrote that book in 1996, 
about the huge illegal alien problem that was going to confront the United States. And, and there was a whole story about migration being a threat to global stability. And here's the, here's the, here's the key in all this. Do you know who encouraged it? Try people like the National Association of Manufacturers. Try people like Microsoft. It was all of these people that encouraged the opening of our borders to bring in cheap labor to keep wages down so their profits could go up. Period. Paragraph. It has nothing to do with human rights. It has nothing to do with, these, with, with being compassionate. It had to do with the bottom line. We saw the problem coming. We wrote about it, and once again, you know, the, it's, it's, a, it's a question be, of between, when you look at the mainstream media, media, political correctness and pettiness, and that's the way they treat these issues. And they're using these domestic groups as a political army, predominantly from Mexico, where they're pulling down American flags in public, making kids, including Hispanic kids, go home from San Francisco schools that wear American flags. And we've now got an Infowars.com story. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave millions to La Raza, including $600,000 uh, just in one gift, $6,661,000 uh, in another gift to literally fund the breakdown of this country. And now we go bankrupt. They're laying off the police. The hospitals are going bankrupt every day, I see it. And we're told... You don't want government-run health care? You're a racist. You don't want to pay for people's free babies? I don't get to go. Every time I've had three children, I pay money. I pay a lot of money. I mean, what, this isn't fair, Gerald. Here's from, here's from Trends 2000. Again, this is 19, 1995 I wrote this. 77% 70, of the people surveyed in the 1994 Times-CNN poll felt that governments were not doing enough to keep out illegal immigrants. This has been a huge issue, and the only reason they haven't been doing anything, again, let's just call it what it is, is to undercut the labor market with cheap labor. That's it. Nothing more. Which doesn't help the economy. It destroys no, the base. It destroys everything because it brings down the whole standard of living. It's like buying, it's like trying to tell people how wonderful it is to go to Walmart to save three cents on something because it's getting made in China and we don't have to have those dirty manufacturing jobs that used to pay high wages and instead now you've become a service sector society. Think of the word. I say this all the time. You break out the word surf. Servant, servitude. We went from a country of craftsmen, a country of merchants, a country of of of, of mom and pop businesses, Artisans. And manufacturers, and now look what we become: cashiers, shelf stockers, and clerks. Brian, I got to move quick. What was your other point? Because we got to go to break. We'll come back and answer it. Well, uh, I want to. Uh, I had two points. Is that okay? No, you go. Okay, all right. One point. I want to. I just want to say that I admire Joseph for bringing up the Constitution because the only way that we're going to defeat it's not big government. Everybody knows that the, that the secret societies like the Illuminati have run this world since ancient Egypt. That the only way that we can defeat them is through the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. Americans have to be educated about the Ninth and Tenth because in the Ninth it says that your rights are permanent; they cannot be taken away. Okay, I want to race through your phone calls. I wasn't trying to be rude to Brian, but we spent one segment with him on a key issue. That's why we're taking your calls. You bring up important topics, but I want to give everybody a chance. Uh, Michelle, Michael, Jeff, uh, Kelly, John, and others. The toll-free number to join us is 1-800-259-9231. Gerald, before we go any further, because you never toot your own horn, it really is invaluable information on your website uh, and, of course, in the newsletter and big corporations, small businesses, individuals subscribe to it. It's very affordable. How do people subscribe to the Trends Journal? I know there's TrendsResearch.com, but how do they uh, get the uh, quarterly report? Well, they go to our Trends Journal login, and they have all the information there. And I want to make this very clear. We make the Trends Journal available to virtually everyone. Uh, regardless, we know a lot of people are having very difficult times. So there's a discount request form for all those that are having a difficult time. Because it, what we're facing here, Alex, is that the, this, the Trends Journal, as you well know, it's not about fear. It's about empowerment. So what we do is we have trend posts, suggestions to take, directions to go. And right now, people really have to start thinking in those terms. 
and particularly all these kids that got out of college that are deep in debt, that are never going to be able to pay it off by, by declaring bankruptcy because they're not allowed to. What direction they need to go in now to really to secure their future. And they have to get out of their houses. They have to start breaking the strings from their parents and really moving out on their own. And what we see is there's a great opportunity now to rejuvenate this country. You can buy houses in major cities that are are in Detroit's that are in much better shape for virtually what you can buy a used car for. And now is the time to start getting on your, out on your own. But also, as I hear that getoffthegrid.com, those kind of things and actions to take. So the Trends Journal is an overview of what's going on and how you can prepare for the future before it hits you. And more and more, it's not just lemonade stands being harassed. Every week I see articles of people selling eggs in the country, watermelons, squash, onions. And they have undercovers that come and buy it from them and then arrest them for supposedly not paying a few dollars of taxes. You can see the system hates the grassroots and hates individuals trying to just tread water and be self-sufficient. But then the illegal aliens in 800-plus sanctuary cities, they're allowed to drunk drive, mug people, whatever. This government hates the blue-collar working people, unless you're on welfare. They want you dependent on them as a voting block, or they want you in prison. We have aristocratic criminals. That's all it is. It's a new aristocratic criminal class. And it's the Bush administration, it was the Clinton administration, and now it's the Obama administration. It's the two-headed, one-party system. And by the, the way... aristocratic criminals. And by the way, you're right, Gerald. If you study feudalism, whether it was in Japan or Europe in the last 600, 700 years... Feudalism is about turning resources off to the general public to make them poor and dumb down to control them. I mean, this is admitted. Uh, the globalists with their carbon taxes. It's not about helping the environment. It's about them being a mafia and being able to say who can have a factory, who can have a business, who can have a job. And then if you're on the inside crew of the Harvard boys, the Princeton boys that you talk so much about, then you can do whatever you want and, and, and not follow any regulations. But if you're a red-blooded American, regardless of what color you are or what religion, you try to start a company or something, they harass you out of existence. Exactly, and the people that are the enforcers are just merely the flunkies for the big guys. I, I've, you may, I may have told you this story. I began my career as the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at a graduate school after putting on campaigns in Westchester County. It was the worst job I ever had to watch grown men sucking up. That's all it is. So in order for them to preserve their jobs, they have to make sure they're, they're bringing in the dough and they bring in the dough by finding the little people whether it's the cop out there that's watching you go over that double yellow line or whether it's again going into the pizza joint to make sure you paid all your sales tax and expanding on that and then we're going to calls in the last three weeks i've, I've been tuning in more uh, to the rebroadcast of it to, because it's so amazing limbaugh has come out and i've read the transcripts here on air and said, it's the Blue Bloods out of Harvard and Princeton, it's the rich elites, it's a, it's a club, it's about kissing up, they want to destroy America to make us dependent on them, it's a world government, it's a new world order, these people are scam artists, it's, it's about who you know, not who you are, and they want to destroy the middle class. I mean, that's a big deal to have Limbaugh finally start sounding like Gerald Salente or Alex Jones. Well, they, you know what these guys do, Alex. They pick on, on, they pick up on what we say, and then they milk it, whether they believe it or not, because he's one of them, and he keeps sucking up to them. You know, so that's what they do. I've been around this game long enough, and, and, and it's good media for them. But no one could deny it now. Look, I'm getting these calls about people writing now about the second American Revolution. Yeah, pick up the, the, the uh, what was it, the, 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 the autumn 2009 Trends Journal, the headline, the second American Revolution. No, it's here. And, and, and this is the other thing, and it's so true. Forget the big lie that all you have to do in America is work hard and put your nose to the grindstone and you're going to make it to the top.